This is Mr. Tapley here for your next lesson of Year 7 Humanities, uh, looking at Ancient History in Term 3. Uh, so our lesson plan for today is uh, primary and secondary sources. Uh, so we're looking at uh, what primary and secondary sources are and how historical sources can be used to provide information. So how do we know about the past? Um, success criteria. Hopefully by the end of this lesson you will be able to define what a primary and what a secondary source is as a form of historical evidence and also uh, differentiate between the two. So what makes them different? What's the difference between a primary and a secondary source? Um, and then the activity we have for today, uh, part of that activity is you explaining uh, the value and significance of these sources. So what can we use them for? Why are they important? What can they tell us about history? So uh, before I go on, uh, I've got a quick little link up there, uh, just a two minute video which goes into a bit more detail about primary and secondary sources. So if you've watched this video, actually read the slides, you don't quite understand, uh, go check out that video there. So what are primary sources? So how do historians study and learn about information from the past? So if I asked you to tell me uh, how many chairs are in the McDonald's on uh, Springville Road in Glen Waverley, you could just go there and find out. If I asked you, uh, what were the streets like in ancient Rome? You couldn't do that <laughs> because it's not the present. So how do historians study and learn about stuff from the past? Well, all our evidence for past history comes from something called primary sources. And those are sources of information that were created in the time being investigated. So the time being studied, if you're studying ancient Greece, anything that was made in ancient Greece, if it's a sword, if it's a building, if it's a, a cup, that's a primary source because it was created during ancient Greece. To study the past, you can use written sources. So you can find letters from a soldier in World War I. You could find journals from uh, someone who was sailing to Australia on Captain Cook's fleet. Uh, you could look at newspaper articles like that one in the bottom left about uh, World War, is it one or two? I can't see, I'll have to zoom in anyway. <laughs> um, you could use art, so paintings count as primary sources, photographs even from the past. Those are all primary sources of information. As long as they were created during the time we're studying, it can tell us a bit about history. Um, there are also archeological sources, so things you dig up out of the ground. Artifacts such as tools, weapons, jewelry, coins, even entire city ruins or monuments or big statues, uh, such as the Great Wall of China, could act as a primary source. So I've got a few examples down there, just a few pictures. But we also have secondary sources. So the past isn't the only location to find information about history. Uh, many historians, archaeologists, and scholars, professors um, have studies, uh, have studied, that's a typo, <laughs> I'll fix that later, have studied primary sources to create secondary sources. So secondary sources are reconstructions of the past. So they're sources about uh, history, but they're created after the history that is being studied. So for example, a GWC textbook created in 2020, so the textbook that you have right now, talks about ancient Greece, was it made in ancient Greece? No. <laughs> it still tells you information about ancient Greece, so it's still a historical source, it's still very helpful, but it wasn't made during the time. It's not a primary source, it's a secondary source. Secondary, created after the fact. Secondary sources can include books, uh, websites, uh, timelines, or even films, documentary films. To create secondary sources, historians often identify info in primary sources. So obviously to create your textbook, the people who uh, wrote the chapter on ancient Greece, they had to look at primary sources from ancient Greece. So to write about ancient Greek uh, weapons, they had to go look at ancient Greek weapons. Um, so historians will identify information in primary sources. So they'll say, okay, that's a primary source. What can I learn about it? So they interpret the meaning of this information. So, okay, I can tell that they had weapons, which means they probably fought in wars or they hunted. I can see that's a very, very, very large sword. <laughs> so they were clearly very strong. And then they use that information to explain past history. So some examples of secondary sources, you've got some textbooks in the bottom right. Uh, the History Channel is a, uh, a network, a website, 
They make videos on YouTube as well, so they create secondary sources. The film Hercules, starring... That's actually The Rock. That's actually Dwayne Johnson. It's so weird seeing him with hair, but anyway. <laughs> that's technically a secondary source of information. Not all of it is accurate, <laughs> but it's still useful information about the past. So, what are we going to do today? Our lesson activity for today is something called a source analysis. So analysis means you evaluate, you interpret, you're basically looking at something, asking questions, and finding answers. So we're looking at historical sources. Historical sources can tell us about life, culture, and events of ancient civilizations. However, they don't come with a little sticker on them that says, here's all the information you need to know. <laughs> they don't explain themselves. In history, you have to act as a detective to find the answer, to find the truth. So you ask the questions, search for answers, done. Which is why I've got Detective Pikachu there. <laughs> My celebrity doppelganger, I think. You can see the resemblance. Um, it is the role of a historian to interpret historical sources. So they sit down next to their ancient building, next to their ancient uh, clothing, painting, whatever, and they say, all right, where is this from? When is it from? Uh, how was it made? Why was it created? Who made this? And what can this tell us about this period in history? This lesson, you are going to be performing that role. You will be testing your source analysis skills by completing the primary secondary source uh, worksheet in Google Classroom assignments. And I'll show you where that is and what it is in a moment. Um, but the learning task requires you to identify a series of historical sources. So I've given you four examples of historical sources, some primary, some secondary. You need to label them as, okay, this is primary or this is secondary. And then you need to write a brief description, two or three sentences, nothing crazy, <laughs> about what this evidence can tell us about history. So what can I learn from uh, this textbook? What can I learn from uh, this crown from ancient Egypt? So doo -doo -doo -doo. if we go to Google Classroom, you'll see we've got our history resources, so our notebook, our slides. Uh, quick side note. 7F3 had a bit of issue uh, with the student digital notebook. I accidentally messed up the sharing permissions and eddings and settings. Um, so that's my fault. So if 7F3 or 7E4 have trouble with their notebook, please let me know. I believe I've fixed the issue. I made a new file that should be working properly. Otherwise, you can just scroll down and use your notebook for um, economics. Or you can just make your own file. As long as I can see it, that's fine. So at the end of the week, I will email everyone just to make sure that I can see their notebook, uh, that they've done their activities, and they've done all the assignments we're doing. Anyway, I've uh, gotten sidetracked. <laughs> so those are the resources. Assignments, what you're looking for is SEM2 learning task, primary and secondary sources. Do, 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 do. And then you just need to open that one up there, and it will give you something that looks like this. So, instructions already read them. Um, what we haven't read is that you can use the information in chapter 1.3 uh, in your textbook, which is in Compass and Google Classroom. You can use the class slides and this video lecture um, to support your efforts in completing this assignment. You shouldn't need to do any additional research if you want to. You're, you're welcome to, but it should be relatively straightforward stuff. Again, I don't need an essay length response. Two or three sentences should do it. So source one, you can see we've got some coins from ancient Greece. So you have to tell me what type of source that is, and what can this tell us about the ancient civilization? What can it tell us about ancient Greece? So think about what those coins might have been used for. Think about how those coins are different to each other. Obviously, they've got different types of coins. Maybe they were used for different things. Maybe they are valued differently. What does that owl mean? Who is that person there? What the hell is that? <laughs> it looks like that one's been squished. Anyway, um, source two, Great Wall of China type of source. What can this tell us about this ancient civilization? So you think about what was that wall for? Was it to keep something in, keep something out, or someone? Source three, this is a timeline of key events in ancient Rome. You can zoom in to see what the events are. <laughs> I won't bother now, uh, but type of source, and what can this tell us about ancient Rome, the ancient civilization being studied there. And then source four, we've got a newspaper article from World War II. So you can see the US declares war on Germany and Italy. Type of source, and what can this tell us about, I shouldn't write ancient there. <laughs> I'm gonna write 
You guys are watching assignments being made in real life. It's a live stream. Uh, tell, tell us about this. Period in history. Nailed it. Let's fix that typo from earlier. Anyway, um, so that's pretty straightforward, guys, I hope. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, best of luck. Hope you guys are well. And uh, congratulations on completing your first week of remote learning again in term three. And uh, yeah, cheers.